Hi guys, um, I'm going to be recording your uh, physical assessment uh, demonstration. Uh, this is what, I would normally do this in class, but I'm doing it ahead of time so that you have time to watch it and uh, review it before you come to lab on Monday. Um, because I will not be re-going over this um, Monday, so you need to hopefully watch this. Um, and then when you come to lab on Monday, you're going to be broken into uh, your uh, groups, um, which I've posted those groups on Blackboard. And then um, you'll have plenty of time uh, Monday to practice this. Um, I've also posted um, this piece of paper, um, which, there we go, I'm not good with cameras, uh, which is a physical assessment guide. It's posted on Blackboard in the lab folder for this week. Um, so this is what you hopefully brought with you so that you can be practicing um, and you know exactly the steps to take. So here's the deal. You're going to go through this form on Monday practicing it and then on Tuesday you're going to be um, you're going to start off in uh, 150 um, and then I'll pull eight of you out at a time uh, and you'll either go to 148 or 154 uh, to be tested. So you'll be one-on-one -on -one with an instructor. You'll have a mannequin uh, who won't look like a mannequin. It'll look like a, a person. Um, and they'll have a, some type of story or scenario um, and then you'll be, have to go through this sheet from memory. You will not have this in the lab with you on Tuesday when you're being tested. Um, so, I, you know, don't panic. We, you, we have taught you everything you need to know. So now we're just going to show you how to put it all together so you can go and do a physical assessment within 10 minutes. We are not focusing on um, what you can hear. Uh, we are focusing on do you know where to put the stethoscope and do you know the proper order on how to do things. Um, I will have my sheet with me just so that I make sure that I don't forget anything. Um, but um, I'm going to give you a, a rundown of how it should look on Tuesday when you come in to be tested, okay? All right, so i am come in. Um, I've been given my patient's name. This is uh, Ms. Hurst, I think it's her name. Um, and I'm going to verify that by looking at her armband. Yep, this is Patty Hurst. Um, my instructor has given me my scenario. So um, now I'm ready to go. So Ms. Hurst, my name is Kim. I'm going to be the nurse taking care of you today and I'm going to uh, do your physical assessment. I'm going to raise your bed up just a little bit so that I'm not bending over quite so much. <coughs> Sorry for that noise. All right. So Mrs. Hurst, can you tell me where you are today? That's correct. You're at the Dell Tech uh, Canton Nursing Lab. Uh, can you tell me what month it is? That's right. It is October. Can you tell me your name and your date of birth? That's correct. Patty Hurst, 2-20-1954. Um, so Ms. Hurst is uh, lying in the bed. Her speech appears to be clear. She's able to answer my questions appropriately. <coughs> Sorry. Um, she uh, is just lying flat in the bed. Um, she uh, doesn't appear to be um, obese. Um, there's no extra motor activity that I'm noticing. Um, there's no uh, body odor smells like nothing seems to be um, out of the ordinary. Uh, so that's all of my general appearance section. So I'm going to go on to skin, hair, and nails. So her skin um, looks to be really good. The temperature is just, uh, nice and cool. Um, I'm going to pull her covers back here just a little bit. And I know you guys can't see um, her legs, but um, she has some. Um, and actually, I'm going to drop this down just a little bit. Hopefully that'll stay. Um, so what you can't see is that on the outside of her thigh here, she does have a large wound. I'm just noting that there is a wound there, um, and I'm not going to do anything with that at this time. I'm going to come on down. She's also got some uh, very black uh, looking toes that I'm taking uh, notice of. Um, I'm going to put my side rail down. I'm going to take a look at um, her fingernails. Capillary refill is less than two. Nail beds look to be nice and intact. Um, hair is brown. Um, looks to be evenly distributed. Um, there are no clubbing on her fingernails. Like I said earlier, no, um, no odors or anything. I uh, felt her temperature. seems to be nice and equal. Whatever I do to this side of the body, I would also do to the other side, but I'm not going to keep going back and uh, forth. Um, what else? Um, head. She has a nice round um, head. It seems to be proportionate to the rest of the size of her uh, body. Um, her eyes. I'm going to look at her eyes. Um, so they're nice and white. Her conjunctiva are nice and uh, pink. There's no drainage in her eyes. Um, let me um, get my pen light. 
which I don't have, so we're going to pretend like this is my pin light. Um, so I'm going to check her perla. So I'm going to take and shine the light. Dead, her pupils are equal. They are round and they will react to light. I'm going to test accommodation, which is the A portion. So this is I uh, curse. Can you take and look at my pencil? Great. Can you take and look at that sprinkler up in the ceiling? Good. Now can you look back at my pencil? Perfect. So her eyes were able to accommodate to the change uh, in the distance. Um, if there's no glasses, do you wear any contacts? No, you don't. So no glasses or contacts uh, present. Um, her ears, her ears are uh, both present. They're symmetrical and proportionate to the size of her head. Um, there's no drainage. There's no piercings noted. Uh, Ms. Hurst, I'm going to um, hold something up to your ear and tell me if you can uh, hear that. Great, you can hear that. All right, now I'm also going to do a whisper test just to make sure. So I'm going to occlude this ear, and then I'm going to whisper something. That's exactly what I said. Very good. All right, um, so I'm going to look now at her nose. Um, nose uh, seems to be okay. There doesn't seem to be any drainage. I would take my pen light, uh, look inside the nose, see if the membranes seem to be nice and pink. Um, this is first, can you uh, take and smell through that side? Any trouble smelling uh, the coffee? No, good. All right, now I'm going to switch. This is first, any uh, trouble smelling this? That's correct, it is an alcohol wipe. Very good. Um, once again, uh, no tubes are present, no piercings. Um, everything looks good with your nose. This is first, can you open your mouth for me? Good, her tongue is midline, it's nice and pink. Uh, mucous membranes are nice and pink. Looks like all of her teeth are present. Um, doesn't appear to be any problems there. Ms. Hurst, can you say ah for me? Good. When she says ah, her uvula rises. Um, do you have any trouble chewing or swallowing? You do not. That is a great thing. Uh, no piercings in her mouth. No uh, dental appliances seem to be present. All right. So I'm going to take a look at her neck. Um, she does seem to have a uh, trachea present. Um, I'm going to raise your head up just a little bit so that my friends who are watching this will be able to see what I am seeing. That's good. All right, so she does have a trachea present. I mean, a tracheostomy present. Her trachea is there as well. Her trachea is midline. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any shift. Um, and tracheostomy doesn't appear to be uh, more to one side or the other. She does not appear to have any JVD present. Uh, she, do you have any trouble moving your neck? Good, so she has perfect range of motion in her neck. All right, so I'm going to move down to your chest. Uh, so Ms. Hurst, for, I'm sorry, but for one second, I'm going to, uh, a couple minutes, I'm going to take and uncover you here just a little bit. So I'm going to inspect her chest area. All right. Doesn't appear to be any scars, uh, no signs of a pacemaker. Uh, there, uh, she does not have a cough. Uh, respiratory rate seems to be nice and regular um, and even. Uh, no signs of any type of uh, respiratory distress. Um, so while I'm here, I'm going to take a listen to your heart sounds. I'm going to listen to the aortic, to the pulmonic, to the herbs point, to the tricuspid, and to the mitral. Good. Everything sounds good. All right. While I'm up here as well, I'm going to have you take uh, some deep breaths in and out for me. So listening to the upper portion of the right lung, upper portion of the left lung. I'm going to listen to the middle of the left, middle of the right. Now I'm going to go down to the sides. You probably won't be able to see this, but I'm going down to the lateral side of the right. And then I'm going to compare that to the lateral um, to the left. All right, so Mrs. Hurst, you make sure you uh, remind me uh, because um, once I'm done, I'll listen to your back, okay? I don't want to do it right now. All right, so Matt, I'm going to pull your gown back up here for just a second. All right, so I'm going to pull your covers up again just a little bit. But I'm also going to pull your gown up because I want to take a look here at your abdomen. And I would lay her flat at this point in time, but because I'm trying to get this on video the best that I can without traumatizing any children at home. Um, so she would be laying flat. So I'll just look at the abdomen first and foremost, right? I'm just looking. I'm not touching anything. Her abdomen appears to be nice and flat. Her umbilicus is midline. There doesn't seem to be any uh, peristalsis or any movement or anything going on. So now I'm going to take an auscultate, inspect auscultate. So I'm listening to the right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, left lower quadrant, right lower quadrant. 
Good, so I hear bow sounds in all four quadrants. Um, everything seems to be moving uh, appropriately. Ms. Hirsch, are you having any pain in any, uh, anywhere in your abdomen? No pain, good. So I'm just going to do some really light uh, palpation across the abdomen, going in a circular motion, going across and then coming back across the bottom. Good, no pain or anything. I didn't notice any grimacing when I did that, so that's good. All right, so I inspected, I auscultated, then I palpated, I'm not going to percuss. All right, so once I get through the abdomen, then I'm just going to look at the uh, extremities. Uh, I'm looking at uh, muscle size, um, appears to be uh, symmetrical bilaterally. Um, I'm going to check the strength. Mrs. Hurst, if you can take and just squeeze my fingers, that is great. And then I would compare that to the left side as well. Um, no, it seems to be no difference there. I'm going to keep going on down. Are you having any trouble walking? Good, that's good. All right, so I'm pulling the covers down. I'm going to come down to her lower extremities. Um, and then same thing, I'm going to be looking at um, muscle size, uh, muscle strength. I'm going to press down on your leg. I want you to try to raise your leg up. Good, so she has good resistance. I'm going to check the capillary refill in her toes as well, um, making sure that it's less than uh, three seconds as well. Check the pulses in her feet and in um, her ankle, making sure that they're good. Um, I'm going to press uh, against your foot, and I want you to press down on your foot like you're stepping on a gas pedal. Good, so she has good strength there as well. Um, and then just doing a general overview, like I said, she has a wound here in her left thigh. Um, it appears uh, right thigh is okay. She's got a dressing on um, her left arm. If there were any other tubes or anything like that, then I would note those. Um, your mannequins may have wounds. Um, you would just say, there's a wound there. This is not the time. You've already been tested on how to do wound care. I'm not, we're not going to be retesting you that day on that. So you're just stating the obvious. And that, we're done. Like that was your, your 10 minute physical assessment and that was really fast because it wasn't a real person. I did not finish. I have to now listen to her back. So what I would do now is I'd have the patient sit up. And I don't have a small dummy that I can use. So at this point in time you would have the, your mannequin, you would, mannequin would be, uh, would be you, yeah. You would sit your mannequin up with your instructor's assistance and then you have to show us on the back where you would listen to the lung sounds on the back. Biggest thing there and what will typically mess students up is they want to go down one side and down the other side. You have to make sure you are comparing. If you listen to one spot on the left side, make sure you go over and listen to that exact same spot on the right side. Then move down and listen to right side, compare it to left side, back and forth. So making sure you're doing that zigzag motion and that you're not just going down listening to the right lung and listening to the left lung. You have to compare them. Um, like I said, you won't be able to have a paper in there when you're being tested. Um, so you have to pretty much, repetition is the key for this. The more you practice on Monday of just going through this over and over and over and over, when you walk in on Tuesday, it won't be any big deal because you'll have it down pat. Um, so we want to see you up and moving and participating in lab. Um, like I said, most of your groups, you have four people. So I would have two people, you know, at the mannequin, practicing on the mannequin, one with the paper, one trying to go through it, um, and then that person correcting. Um, we don't want you just to practice on the mannequins either because a huge part of this is learning the sounds. Um, so the other two of you could go over to 150, which is just beds and stretchers. There's no actual patients. And practice on each other listening to these actual sounds. Um, and then switch it up after a certain amount of time. So we want you up, we want you practicing. This is not just about reading off a piece of paper or reading in the book or watching this video. You have to practice this. And like I said, you've been practicing it. You've just been practicing it in segments, okay? So now you're putting it all together. You notice that I didn't do a full neuro exam, um, but there were little pieces of the neuro exam that were incorporated into the whole physical assessment. So I hope this helps. Um, like I said, it's really not as hard as it sounds, so don't let your nerves get in the way. Um, but if you watch this and then you guys come into the lab ready to practice on Monday, you'll be fine on Tuesday, okay?